day my life on it. Now why did you give me such advice to pray? And why ask for my advice on such a matter? You both my dad. I tell you, here are your hands. Come on, yours. What for? Now yours. What's the use? Oh, Queen, come along. There, both of you. You love each other better than you think. Come on. Look at the man, as big as him. Are you not the weak creature to take delight in saying what will pay me? And are not yourself the most ungrateful? Leave this discussion till another time. Now think, how you will stand off this lady, Mary? Then tell us how to go about it. Well, we will try all sorts of ways. Your father's death. Please play his nonsense. So let him cast off danger. You. Uh, she can still find me to love with Mary. If she can time, the rest is easy. Trust me, she will fool him with her sudden illness. Causing delay. Let her not marry her to anyone before her saying yes. But now, we think, let us find each other together. Oh, man, Mr. Bernie! Go and walk and send your friend at war to take his word to you. Goodbye. Whatever efforts we make, my greatest hope be sure the rest on you. I cannot answer for my father's purpose, but no one say for that shall ever have me. You throw me through. Oh, please love us. Never die with friendly. Now, go. One last word. You, by the sword, and you, the other.
Oh, may heavens overflowing kindness ever give you good health of body and of soul, and bless your days according to the wishes of it, and the prayers of its most humble votary. I'm grateful for your past wishes, but let's sit down so look at this. How are you recovered from your illness? Quite well. The fixer let go is hold. Oh, my friends, I feel have not sufficient mercy to you. But each entreaty that I met to heaven is for your recovery. Oh, you are too solicitous on my behalf. We could not cherish your dear health too much. I will have given mine to help restore it. Let's push in Christian charity too far. I owe you so many thanks for your kindness. I do far less than you deserve. In fact, there's a matter I wish to speak with you in private. I'm glad there's no one here to listen. Oh, Adam, I'm overjoyed. This way to find myself along with you. This is an opportunity I have asked of heaven many a time till now in vain. Oh, like I wish, it's just a word from you. Quite frank and open, hiding nothing from me. Oh, I wish, as heaven is a special favor, to lay my soul quite open to your eyes and swear to you the trouble that I met to lost visit for your charmer trick does not result from any hatred toward you, but rather from a passionate devotion and furious motives. Yes, yes, I see. I think let my salvation as concerns you. Oh, madam, it's so, and such is my devotion. Ouch! You squeeze too hard. Oh, in no, is this of steel? In no ways could I ever mean to hurt you. And uh, I would ask soon. Put <laughs> your hand to it there. Feeling your car. The stuff is very soft. Let me, I beg you, I'm very British. Oh, how wonderful in what mansion this place is. Like you marvels, nowadays, things of all kinds were never made in vain. Yes, very true, but let's come to business. Let's say my husband means to break his word and marry Maria to you, isn't so? It 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 means unsightly. But surely, madam, it's not the happiness I'm really after. You mean you cannot love Paris true things? The heart within my bosom is not strong. I will believe your sign. Oh, tend to heaven. Let nothing here be looking steady in your thought. Oh, love for the beauty of eternal things cannot destroy our love for earthly beauty. And uh, our mortal senses well may be interested by the perfect work that heaven has fashioned here. I could not look down to you. Oh, oh your decoration has most lately, but it is a little surprising. You should better unmade your heart and take it down some for such a matter. A pious man like you, not everywhere. Oh, Lord Pius, I'm nonetheless a man. And when a man beholds your heavenly charms, the heart surrender, I can't think no more. If you condemn my friendly man of power, you only have your charming self to bear. Now, to express it all, oh, my voice must speak. I will hear you through. Yes, speech are very clearly. But don't you feel late? I may take a fancy to tell my husband of your good intention and the prompt report of this affair. Let's check your friendship when he bears you. I know that you are too good and a generous that you will pardon my humility. And when you consult your mirror, that I'm not blind. And man is made of flesh. Someone might do otherwise, perhaps. But I'm willing to keep the secret for you. But in return, I will ask one thing of you. That you have urged for word, friendly, and sincerely. The very 
heard your flagellary end, and you have to give up the unjust influence, which you hope to win an artist's right, and... Uh, no! I say, this thing must be made public! I was just there, and overheard it all. Heaven's goodness must have brought me there on purpose to confound this scoundrel's pride, and grant me leave to take a single vengeance on his prophecy and arrogance, and I'll deceive my father, showing up the rest of cause and making up to you. No, no, it's not. If he reforms, it's not my way to make a public scandal. And I believe an aunt's wife will never scorn to kill such foolish, and never buy the husband's ears with land. You feel this of your own, your and I had mine to be otherwise. The rest of all too long, has brought my father and crossed my sister's mom. I must be unless before him to have I only opportunity. And if I didn't use it now, I have it. I should deserve to lose it once for all. That means no. by your leave, I'll not because I'm over jolly. Yes. <laughs> Shame the Christ I've done. 